Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be working on Strange Printer. In this problem you have a Strange Printer with the following special properties. The printer can only print a sequence of the same character each time and at each turn the printer can print new characters starting from and ending at any place and it will cover the original existing characters. Given a string s, return the minimum number of turns the printer needs to print. So this problem is definitely quite tricky. Um, and first of all I'll try to explain what they mean. So when they say that the printer can print a sequence of the same character, it means it has to print a contiguous sequence. It can't just print like an A here, an A here, and an A here. Okay. And so let's go over the example. So first we have A, A, B, and we have B, B, B. So essentially this can print, um, this can take two prints and it can work one of two ways. So you can either print A, 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 and then you can print in one sequence and then BBB in the second sequence, or you can simply print a sequence of six A's and then you can rewrite three of them with B's. So like the first print would be this and the second one would write three B's over the A's. And that's gonna be important to like know the intuition for the problem. And for the second one, it's that's kind of the same thing they're doing. They're saying, let's print A, 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 and then we are gonna rewrite this with a B. So let's look at some other cases. What do we have something like ABC? ABC. How long is this going to take? Right? So we're going to be doing the same kind of thing here, where because this is a continuous sequence, what we're going to actually be doing is you could write like one letter at a time, but that would take six steps. So actually, what you want to do is you want to take the whole thing and you want to just write it in C's. You usually want to take the character that you have multiple copies of. But there can be a bunch of different possibilities, right? So, but here in this case, so we can actually write CCC, CCC, and now we can, that's one operation. So our second operation will be having one A, our third operation will be having a B, and then four is gonna be an A, and five is gonna be here. So it's actually gonna take five steps. So essentially we have to do like a guess and check of anytime we see a letter, can we write it in another letter at the same time, right? Like we have some A and then we have some words like, you know, A, B, C, A, B, C. We can say like, okay, anytime we see a letter and we find another letter, like, let's just see what happens if we just convert this all to A's. Like, is that going to be optimal or not? And another hint they give you is there are only a hundred uh, letters. So, this, so you can use like, n squared, n cubed, you can use really inefficient algorithms. And so this algorithm is actually gonna be really tricky and it's gonna be a DP algorithm, but let's go over like the, the cases for everything and hopefully it makes sense. So we're gonna have DP, what do we need for DP? We need cases, or sorry, we need parameters. We need a base case and we need a recursive case. And so let's also think about like, what's just like a really, like wh what would be like the naive way of printing these letters? Like let's say you have A, A, A and you're just like, whatever, I just want to get this done. Well, the naive way would just be printing one letter at a time, right? Then you're sure to like get it done. So that could be like a way to do it, right? You could just say like, all right, let's print the A, then let's print the next A, then let's print the next A and so on. And so that we're going to use that for our default strategy. And then we're just going to see if we can optimize it. We're just printing one letter. And then obviously that's always going to be valid. And then that's going to be like our base recursive, like kind of like a, I'll, I'll get into that uh, once we get into it. Okay. So for the parameters, we're actually going to have, it's pretty straightforward. So we're actually just going to be, we're going to be trying to print a string. And so the parameters are just going to be I, J indices where they're going to be the start and, and end of the string. Right. So we're going to have like, it's going to start at the start and the end, and then we're going to try to do substrings. Okay, for the base case, it's all also pretty straightforward. So if i is greater than j, then obviously there are no more characters, right? So we can just return zero here. That part is pretty straightforward. And now for the recursive case, it's actually kind of tricky. So what we're gonna start is we're just gonna initialize our result. Let's just call it the result, right? We're gonna make it just, let's just, pr let's just do one plus dp of the next thing. So it'd be like this. So we'll just have a naive approach. Let's, let's just print the letter, right? And see what happens. And then from there, we actually need to compare this to every other letter in the string 
and see if the letters are the same. Let's try to actually print those at the same time and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. We're gonna try to minimize the number of cases. So we're gonna try to print those at the same time. And what that's gonna look like here is, hopefully it'll actually let me type. Okay, there we go. All right, just, okay. So what that's gonna look like here is we're gonna try to minimize our result. And if we try to, like, let's say we have a character and another character, let's just say they match at index K, right? What we're actually gonna do is we need to figure out what's the DP so if you think about it, um, if you print one letter, right, and you remove it, that, that could work. But if you try to print two letters at the same time, like how are we gonna try to minimize that? And so if we try to merge the same character essentially and minimize that, we're gonna need to print everything um, before that section and then everything after that section, right? So. So like if, if there's a character at, for example, let's say we have, you know, A, B, B, A, C, D, let's say, whatever, right? And this is at index zero, this is one, two, three. So we're gonna say, let's just figure out the DP of this chunk and then the DP of this chunk because we don't need to include this because this A and this A will be printed at the same time. Like we're just gonna, make this whole chunk A's essentially. So we need the chunk of the left and the chunk of the right if, if we're comparing those two characters. So what, that's, what, what is that gonna be exactly in our typing here? So it's actually gonna be I, and then hopefully we can write a little higher up, that would be ideal. Let's try to do that. Okay, this is fine. Okay, so we're gonna have I up to K minus one, right? If K is this A, and then we're gonna to need to add the DP of K plus one, and then all the way to J, right? The rest of the string. And so this is gonna be our recursive case, essentially, where we're saying, okay, we're trying to match these letters. Let's just see, like, can we print these at the same time? And we actually have to loop through the entire string. So we're gonna have I, J, and a loop through the entire string. So this is actually gonna be N cube complexity because we're gonna have I, J, and like a K that we're looping through the entire string, but it's fine because we only have a hundred letters, okay? And then we also obviously have our, you know, memoization case. But essentially we're trying to merge the same character and we're trying to see, okay, like, can we merge those? And if we do merge those, then is that gonna minimize our number of characters? And so that's our DP case. Okay, and so now we do have enough to start coding. So we're gonna have a visited set as always. Close. And then we are going to have, uh, sure, let's make sure this is tabbed correctly. Okay, so then we're gonna have our printer and we're gonna have an i and a j here. And so if i is greater than j, that means we are out of bounds. So there's obviously nothing there. Now, if i, j is always in visited, we are going to return visited i, j, right? Pretty straightforward. So there we go. So now what we need to do is we need to actually figure out like what's gonna be our base kind of case. And our base case is literally just gonna be the naive approach of like, let's just try to print the letter and move on. So if we try to print the letter, that'll be one print. So it'll be one plus uh, printer of I plus one J. And then we're gonna try to minimize this by combining letters. So like I said, when we combine letters, this operation, th this A will be included with this A. So we don't have to, like, this will be zero time essentially. So we don't have to include that. We just have to include the first part and the second part because we are combining the letters in one print. And we have to check every single letter and we have to minimize it. Okay, so we can say 4K in range. And then what's the actual range? So what what letter do we start at? So if we're at letter A here, we need to, we need to check all of these letters essentially, right? So that's gonna be I plus one and then two J plus one because uh, in Python, the second part is not inclusive. So this is really saying, let's just check every single letter from I plus one to J. And then we can say if S I equals S K, let's just try to combine those letters into one print. So we can say res equals minimum of res. And then remember, it's gonna be the DP of I to K minus one that K letter will be printed at the same time as this left thing, according to our merge. 
And then finally, we need the right side of that. So it's going to be dp of k plus 1. And so if you were to try this on something like AAA, for example, what would happen is it would try to print A. It would be 1, 1, 1. This last one would take 1. But then this part would say, oh, these two match. So let's just do the dp of this section here, which is going to be 1. And then this is going to be these two match. So let's just do a dp of this whole section, which is going to be 1 as well. So for this AAA, you would get 1. It's definitely kind of confusing, but I'd encourage you to just maybe try some like easier, you know, th this does get like really big, really fast. So it's hard to diagram it because it, you know, it's like N cubed, but you can try this for something like AAA and ABA, just walk through the, this problem with it and you're, you'll kind of see the pattern. But for something like something really big, it's kind of hard to diagram because it just, it just gets really big, really fast. Okay. And so now we have that and then we need to actually store that in our visited, right? So let's do that. So we're going to store that uh, probably here, right? Oh, and actually, so we don't need this. So this was tabbed incorrectly. Okay, finally, we need to store it. So we can just say visited ij equals result. And we return result. And then finally here, we can say, okay, let's just return dp of zero length s minus one essentially because this the starting index is going to be zero and the last index is j minus one or uh, sorry it's the last index of the area uh, this shouldn't be dp this should be printer and this should be printer this should be printer so I used to writing dp okay okay there we go yeah, so it's pretty efficient. It's definitely quite a confusing problem, but as soon as you recognize that like from this, like here, we're trying to merge this A and this A to write them at the same time because you don't want to just write like A, B, A, that would take three while merging them would be faster. And same kind of thing for all this stuff. Okay. So now let's actually think of the time and space complexity here. So for the time, so i and j can be anything in s, that's going to be m squared. And then we also have this loop that also loops basically through i and j, so that's going to be n cubed. And then for the space, what's our like, how many states can we have? So we can have i and j, so that's going to be m squared states here. And yeah, okay, so that's going to be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. Definitely a quite tricky one. And uh, yeah, I would I, like I said, I would encourage you to go through these little examples to try to understand it better. It's definitely not super straightforward and even if you see the solution like it's super like it's not it's still it can still be really confusing and it was quite confusing for me for a while but that's going to be it so uh, uh please like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching